Uh, Royal Dutch Shell and BG Group, their deal got finalized, but the real question is now what? 80% of shareholders approved the merger, thinking that management would be able to make something of it. Obviously, things have not been going well in the oil and natural gas markets, BG being a natural gas player. Uh, is it too early to call this a failure, or did shareholders really truly get burned for their trust in Royal Dutch Shell's management? Taylor, what do you think? Too, too soon. Too soon? Yeah. I mean, they're not expected to double their LNG production for a couple more years through this deal. Let's give them at least a little bit of time to be uh, one company. You know, yeah. they're, they're not together yet. It's still in the approval process, so let's give them time before before they don't shoot themselves in the foot or they do shoot themselves in the foot. Right now, they haven't done anything other than yeah. make an offer and try to solidify it, right? So, in everything's 2020 in hindsight. Do you think, given what we know now, you know, natural gas is at two bucks, all this stuff, do you think maybe they should not have done it? Given what we know now. You, I mean, know, you know, you I guess you can compare uh, Exxon when they purchased, uh, what was it, XTO? XTO Energy, yeah, yeah, back in 2010. And then I natural gas prices fell off a cliff. Yeah. Um, so, you're kind of... Granted, they didn't buy it in the middle of the downturn, or at least Shell thought they were buying maybe in the downturn at the at the bottom. Turns out it wasn't the bottom, um, but I could only see upward movement from here. Over the fingers long crossed, yeah. yeah. Fingers crossed, exactly. Cool. I think the LNG scenario for them will be pretty robust. I mean, there's calls for over the next two or three years that it won't be that great. But, you know, let's look beyond that because like you were saying, a lot of their ramp up is going to be a few years down the road. The the one so on that end, I think they're actually going to be pretty good. But offsetting that, one thing that worries me a little bit is going to be when you combine these two companies, they have a very high exposure to deep water uh, production, especially in places like Brazil, which is long tail, high cost, exactly, and Lots that's one of, fun. of the things that um, certainly. Well, I, I'm not going to say that we're going to stay in this low in price oil environment for a long time. I think it, in the next couple of years or so, we are going to see some sort of recovery because at right now it's pretty un, unsustainable in terms of development and anybody actually making any money. So. But beyond that, these high costs of places like Brazil, uh, you know, Shell already nixed its Arctic exploration programs, being tied so heavily to the deep water um, production is going to make me a little bit nervous when we have shorter cycle, cheaper options like shale oil, shale gas that are starting to emerge that, you know, maybe that's not the, that deep water isn't going to be as attractive as it looks today.